Hi friends of Sailing Vessel Easy. Now it's time for the second part of my Spring Boatworks videos on Sailing Vessel Easy. This video is about installing a Victron Energy charger inverter. And by the way, I just bought this product, although I like it a lot, but I have no connection to Victron Energy whatsoever. I'm not getting paid for any of these reviews. So enjoy watching me trying to fiddle that heavy lump of metal into easy. The Victron Energy Inverter Charger is able to produce these 230 volts out of 12 volts of the service battery banks. This MultiPlus Inverter Charger is also able to use shore power to charge the battery banks. What I did was installing two additional switches to the whole system to achieve the goal that I can switch between the old charger, which was a charger only to charge the service battery and the starter battery, and the new Victron Energy charger. The other switch I installed is this one. I can now select to take this alternating current from the shore connection or whether I want to use the Victron Energy the important thing is you need switches with a neutral middle position so there is no chance that the two positions can ever be connected. What I indicated by drawing a very thick line here is that I used 100 square millimeters of cable to connect the service battery with the Victor Energy Charger Inverter because of the very high current in this position. In the front you see the fuses where the new cables are going to be attached and in the back you see a hole where the transverter is going to be mounted. It's going to be difficult but it fits in there. Today is electro day but first I will need to get all this stuff out of the way. So let's get started with the installation of the inverter. Finished. That's very sturdy. But you'll see the converter is pretty heavy. Wow. This fits perfectly. The other screw was a real killer. Well, this one is comparatively easy to get in. was half an hour for two for two screws. First I constructed two voltage sensor cables to get this thin red cable into the cable shoe to fit to the battery. I took a short cut off piece of 50 squared millimeters cable and used that as a plug to fill this cable shoe. So there's the cable shoe sitting in the ugh, sitting in the brackets of the crimping device it's only the second time i've been using this thing so now you start and you need a lot of force to get this done Oops. 
Okay, job done. Open the hydraulic valve. Finished. Now the next step is to put some heat shrink tubing on this and I'll show you the finished product. Here you see the temperature sensor and the minus voltage sensor cable attached to the minus pole of the battery and on the other side is my positive cable for the voltage sensing on the battery. The lid and the last four screws are still missing. Here you see the finished cable connections. The gray cable is the cable to the remote control. On the left side you see the incoming 230 volts cable. Next is the outgoing 230 volts cable. And on the right side you see the double cables for 12 volts plus the thin red sensor cables for the voltage sensor of the battery. So that's the position where the transverter finally sits. This plywood is waterproof. I don't know what it's called in English, but we call it boat builders plywood. So I just took it as it is and it doesn't need any coat because it's waterproof. The next thing was to attach the transverter to the 12 volt um, plus or minus of the, of the service battery. So here you see the connection of the plus pole. And over there is where I installed the negative wires. They are double to minimize the voltage loss over the distance of I think about two meters one way. I also installed a heavy duty switch. I even installed a small switch to the voltage sensor so I can completely disengage the transformer from the boat's batteries. Since the main fuse on this boat is rated with 160 amps and the transverter needs to be fused with 400 amps. I had to bridge the main fuse, which is this one, and install two 200 amps fuses in parallel to get enough current for the transverter. I reused my old shore power cable, which Kirsten, my wife, was so keen on throwing away over the winter but I was sure I would use it for something so I reused that for the line um, from the shore power to the inverter to the transverter and uh, for the 230 volts produced by the transverter. These cables run all through the boat and end at the nice switch panel and here you see the remote panel for the inverter. Now let me show you the different functions of this inverter. In the left position you can use the inverter just as a charger. There's now a relatively low charging current because the battery voltage is at 13.7 volts. Now I'll demonstrate the inverter in a combined action. So I'll now switch on my vacuum cleaner and see what's happening. And you see for 750 watts for the vacuum cleaner it is drawing 73 amps from the battery. So that's the reason why I included these really thick cables. And you see the battery voltage is immediately down to 12 volts. Before we got easy out of the hole and into the water, there are still some boat building projects to tell you about before we finally started our first sailing trip. Even if boat building is not your thing, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and share the videos with your friends.
See you next time. Bye.